Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I am an acrylic artist. I just want to say thank you so much for stopping in today. I hope you're going to grab some paints and paint along with me today. We're going to be doing a fun little spring beginner friendly project. You guys, it's going to be so easy and so fun. I think you'll, uh, if you're a beginner, you'll learn a lot in this one still. Let's take a look at what we're going to paint. We're going to be painting this cute little bluebird blue I've titled Song of Spring. It's just singing away, welcoming in spring, which I am ready to do right now because it is so cold here. So uh, I think you're going to have a good time with this one. I used Deco Art Americana acrylic paints. Um, very affordable, very easy to find at most um, hobby stores. Um, so you can uh, grab some paints and paint along. Of course, you can paint it a red bird. You could paint it a robin. You could paint it any kind of bird that you want. This line drawing will work well on any style of bird. So uh, if you feel like you want a different bird, singing to you then by all means paint a different bird on there you can grab a full packet for this on my website lanalam.com and the packet comes with step-by-step -step written instructions step-by-step -step color photos a line drawing and a full color photo of this particular project right here and uh, if you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I hope you will hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up for this video. Please comment and share. All of that helps me grow right here on YouTube and keeps me moving up in the algorithm so I can bring more and more of these videos to you. So if you are ready to paint this adorable little bluebird, which is on this side of me, <laughs> let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting. Okay, I've got my six by eight canvas panel here. I have applied two coats of chalky gesso with my damp two inch foam roller, washed my roller while it dried, and then applied one coat of Blue Haven with the same roller. It is dry and now we're ready to put some color in here. So I'm gonna put some Blue Haven out and some white. Just a tiny bit. I think I might use Victorian blue. Maybe to add a little bit of accent color in here. Then I have my damp stippling sponge. You can use an artist sponge, you can use a sea sponge, whatever sponge you have on hand. So I'm going to load all three of these colors on this sponge. So I'm just going to kind of ball it up in my hand and grab some blue. Grab some white, grab some blue. I've got all three colors on here. And I'm going to start just tapping this in here and creating this mottled looking background. Want more white, I want that blue, our base color blue. And a little bit of that dark blue. And we're going to tap it all around. And then we're just going to start very gently blending. We'll find a little bit cleaner spot and we'll just tap and very gently blend that. We don't want to over blend to make it all become one color. We want to see all those colors. So we're just going to lightly tap using a damp edge of the sponge. If your sponge is not damp, you're definitely not going to be able to blend it. things in there. I definitely want it to be well well um, blended together. I'm going to move to a different area here because I keep laying in some of that dark color and I don't really want to lay in any more dark color. So I'm going to put the paint to the inside of the sponge and use the back side and very gently give this a fun little sky. It can be darker down here at the bottom because this is the 
darker part of the sky. The lighter parts up there. You can continue to add and blend as long as your paint is still wet. Mine's still pretty wet. I think that's looking pretty good. I want to put a little bit more white in here because I want to create a little bit look of some maybe some clouds going across here. So I might tap some areas in and then go to the back of my sponge and I'm going to very lightly blend those. We'll, they'll just be very subtle in the sky there. This one we probably won't see at all because our main art is going right there, but we can get a little bit of some white cloud stuff going on there. And my paint is still pretty wet, so I can continue to really work that paint into my sponge. I'll put a little bit of darker stuff down here. going to very gently blend that. A little bit darker at the bottom down here. Okay. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Okay. I'm going to get it dry. While it's drying, I'm going to go clean this sponge out and uh, then we're going to get our line drying on here. Use some of your um, gray graphite. Make sure your surface is complete, your paint is completely dry because if not, when you go to put your line drying on, on there, you're just going to set your paint into, you're going to set your, uh, your graphite into your paint and uh, that is not a good thing. So make sure it's completely dry. Okay, I've got my 6x8 canvas panel here. I have applied two coats of chalky gesso with my damp 2-inch foam roller, washed my roller while it dried, and then applied one coat of Blue Haven with the same roller. It is dry, and now we're ready to put some color in here. So I'm going to put some Blue Haven out and some white. Just a tiny bit. I think I might use Victorian blue. Maybe to add a little bit of accent color in here. And I have my damp stippling sponge. You can use an artist sponge, you can use a sea sponge, whatever sponge you have on hand. So I'm going to load all three of these colors on this sponge. So I'm just going to kind of ball it up in my hand and grab some blue. Grab some white, grab some blue. I've got all three colors on here. And I'm going to start just tapping this in here and creating this mottled looking background. Want more white, I want that blue, our base color blue. And a little bit of that dark blue. And we're going to tap it all around. And then we're just going to start very gently blending. We'll find a little bit cleaner spot and we'll just tap and very gently blend that. We don't want to over blend to make it all become one color. We want to see all those colors so we're just going to lightly tap using a damp edge of the sponge. If your sponge is not damp, you're definitely not going to be able to blend it. things in there. I definitely want it to be well well um, blended together. I'm going to move to a different area here because I keep laying in some of that dark color and I don't really want to lay in any more dark color. So I'm going to put the paint to the inside of the sponge and use the back side and very gently give this a fun little sky. It can be darker down here at the bottom because this is the, the 
at the part of the sky. The lighter parts up there. We can continue to add and blend as long as your paint is still wet. Mine's still pretty wet. I think that's looking pretty good. I want to put a little bit more white in here because I want to create a little bit look of some maybe some clouds going across here. So I might tap some areas in and then go to the back of my sponge and I'm going to very lightly blend those. Well, they'll just be very subtle in the sky there. This one we probably won't see at all because our main art is going right there, but we can get a little bit of some white cloud stuff going on there. And my paint is still pretty wet, so I can continue to really work that paint into my sponge. I'll put a little bit of darker stuff down here. going to very gently blend that. A little bit darker at the bottom down here. Okay. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Okay. I'm going to get it dry. While it's drying, I'm going to go clean this sponge out and uh, then we're going to get our line drying on here. Use some of your um, gray graphite. Make sure your surface is complete, your paint is completely dry because if not, when you go to put your line drying on, on there, you're just going to set your paint into, you're going to set your, uh, your graphite into your paint and uh, that is not a good thing. So make sure it's completely dry. Okay, so my background's dry. My pattern has a circle in it. It's not quite four inches in diameter, but this is right at about four inches. So I am just going to trace this. If you have uh, something else that you can trace or just use the line drawing, whatever works best for you. I'm gonna put it pretty close to center here. And I'm just going to Trace around this for my circle. Okay, and then we're going to come in with our gray graphite and add our line drawing in. So you'll lay your line drawing where you want it to be. And you can see my circle is just slightly bigger, which is no problem. And then I'll slide my gray graphite underneath. You can cut off the bottom part or whatever and um, a corner or something and tape it down. That would probably be ideal. Okay, now this is just my rough line drawing. It may adjust and change as I paint this design in. So that's why it's in pencil, so if I need to make changes to it, I can. So we're going to put in the basic. We're going to leave the bow tie and the eyes off. But everything else we're going to put on here. put in some of these finer detail lines. Well, I might go ahead. That's where it kind of is curved over on each wing. So we got the bird good. Not quite sitting on the wire there, so I'll have to extend his legs. And then I'll want to move my paper up here so I can get my limb on here. And my leaf. 
tips. And my wire. And my jewels. And music notes. pretty good. So we're going to start from here. I am going to adjust the feet here because uh, my circle is a little bit bigger than what it was on my original. So we'll have to bring the legs a little bit longer. So I'll have to adjust that on my pattern if I go with this size. That's pretty wonky there. Okay, I'm going to get this adjusted. <laughs> I think I'll do it off camera because it's a uh, not working out the best way that I would like it to work out. Okay. Alright, I'll probably adjust that as I go because those, those claws look pretty big. I might have to make them completely different as we start painting. Um, so, let's grab our paints and start painting. All right, let's add some base coats on here. So for our darker areas on our bird, we're gonna do Chris Blue and Snow White. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my colors out here. We're going to do Blue Haven for the light areas. Moon Yellow for the face. Persimmon for the beak and the feet. Uh, foliage green for the leaves. Uh, cocoa. No, is that what I have? Cocoa? No, I have sable brown. Sable brown for the branch, and everything will get two coats. That's a new bottle. All right, so two coats on everything. So for our dark areas, we're going to just, I'm just going to brush mix uh, Chris Blue, one, and then we're going to do two Snow Whites. So dip in there, dip in there again, blend, 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 and we'll get this really pretty bright blue. And this will be all of the main or dark areas. Shop a little bit. I got a glob of paint in there. Way more than I need. Go around the face here. area will be this color. This mix here. You could turn your bird into a cardinal if you want to. And this is just a cute little bird. Okay, this tail feather. 
there. It does go behind the bar thing that it's sitting on. But when we paint that bar, and we will definitely paint the paint it over the tail feathers. Okay. The outside area of the wing. When we come in and add that color, we're going to do a gentle blend, I think. Okay, and this side as well. And I'm using an 8 chisel brush. It's short bristles, so I don't have to worry about my brush getting out past any of my areas that I'm painting, since I'm painting in smaller areas. Okay, so that should be all of our darker blue areas on our cute bird. Okay, so the light blue is going to be inside the wings and the chest. Our blue haven. And these areas in here. Picking up a small amount of paint at a time. Don't overload your brush. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so the face part is going to be yellow, that moon yellow. And I think we might mix some white in there. Let's try an equal mix of moon yellow and white. I want this to be a light yellow. Moon yellow is a little bit darker than what I want. Too much moisture in my brush. How I knew that I had too much moisture in my brush it was thinning my paint right there as I was laying it in. So it should be a nice... It should be... A your paint should be a little thin with some water, but not so thin that it starts showing the background of the canvas there. And that's what mine was doing. It was showing the canvas. And this is a more opaque color, so it shouldn't have been showing the canvas. So right here you can go to a smaller brush. Which probably would be a good idea. I'm really up on the tiptoe of this brush, going around that side of the mouth. Okay, and we want to use this color. No, we're going to use persimmon on the feet. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush for the beak. And the feet small round brush and we're going to see if persimmon's going to be too dark. We might need to go a little bit lighter here. Let's see what some yellow mixed in there looks like. Yeah, let's do a mix of an equal mix of persimmon and moon yellow. Give us a little bit lighter orange color.
beak. One to one. The inside of the beak will be a different color. This will be all of our base coat colors and we will apply them two times so that we have nice opaque colors here. And the second time you can add just a little bit of moisture to your paint to slightly thin it and just kind of wash over your areas because you don't have to have it as dark. Okay, inside Let's see. Inside the mouth is going to be a little bit darker. Um, let's try some burnt umber inside the mouth. It can at least be our base color. And then our branch up here, I'll go back to my, this color is really thick, sable brown. And we'll base in our branch. leaves are going to be foliage green. And then all of my beginning colors that I put on should be dry and some thick paint there. And we can go in and start applying our second color, our second layers to the colors. I'm not going to worry about the beads and the wire and all that stuff. Um, I'm going to paint all that in towards the end. that's coming off of here. Okay. Alright, so that's all of our first coats. We're going to do two coats. So I'll go off camera and apply the second coat and then you, we will be ready to begin painting from that point. Okay, change the color of my bow tie and it is growing by the second. So I took some frosted plum and white, two white, one frosted plum, and I'm painting the bow tie in with this color instead of that green. The green was just a little bit too muted. I wanted a little bit more color here. So we'll do that color. Okay, I've double loaded my brush with my dark color and my light color. I'm going to put the light color next to the light color and we're going to try and blend this out a little bit onto the wing so it's not quite such a hard line. And we'll do the same over here. You can leave it the hard line if you prefer that. I just want to give it a little blending and blend that out, make it a little bit smoother transition. We'll do the same thing to the chest area. And that 
just gently blends it. A nice transition of color there. Okay, let's shade on our bird. I've got some Victorian blue here. And we're going to start by separating our tail from the body here. A very soft float. And grab a mop brush if you feel like you need it. Very soft floats here. Go on the side. start there. Try and separate our little feathers on the top of the head here. of our feathers right here. And then where our wing is. This is very sheer Victorian blue. paint on this chest area. And I'm going to mop that. Definitely remove a little bit of it. Right here, let's do the tail feathers. here. Grab a little bit of paint. Go up lower edge of the wing feathers and we can highlight on the opposite edge. Looking cute as can be. 
I'm going to repeat up here. I want this to be a little darker. So make sure all of your previous layer is dry. And then you can come back with a second layer in a few places. Just where you feel like you need a little bit. Looking pretty good. These are small areas, so you'll need a smaller brush, one that you can feel comfortable controlling. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's good for our shading. So we've applied it and we reinforced it by applying a second in areas that we want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, we're going to highlight on the dark blue areas with um, Blue Haven. And we'll see how this works out. Take some of that moisture out. So we're going to do on our little feather pieces at the top. And I'm going to just tap a little bit of highlight in there, and right through there. We're going to highlight this wing and then we'll add a little bit on these wings these feathers I guess the wing feathers some of this on the front of the chest here and on our tail feathers on the front of the leg here Definitely 
probably use a small round brush to do this as well. Just repeat all the places that you did. Use a round brush if you need to. take some Snow White and just add a fine detail line here and there on that dark blue. So let's put white there and there and along here. is white. We're not going to cover up all of our previous light color that we put on, but we do want to brighten those areas. Okay, just a little bit. And I think that's pretty good for our light blue. So we use the Blue Haven first, and then I came back with just straight white. And actually, let's add white in one more place here. Let's tap a little bit in here. And I'm going to tap it out with my finger and diffuse it a little bit. Give a little highlight inside the wing. Do it a couple times to make it stand on top. Let's put some of that on the chest as well. I'm going to go back to my this is in the light areas. I'm just adding snow white highlights in the, the light blue areas. Okay, a little bit more on this one. Just a little tippy dab. Tap it out with your finger. Use your um, mop brush if you want. Okay, any place that kind of fades back in there, just get a little repeating. soft little highlight on there. Nothing serious or strenuous. Okay, that was just with white. I did it three times. Okay, we're going to work on the face and we're going to use antique gold. And we're going to shade on the side of the face. Just slightly up through there because we're going to be Putting some of this on the eyelid. I'm going to go around the beak here a little bit. And probably a little bit around the bow tie. Now this is a boy bird. Obviously if you're making a girl bird, you'll probably want to give it some rosy little cheeks. So let's go on the eye. Side wasn't quite 
smooth is what I wanted. Just right along that edge there. And then yeah. Okay. Let's do some highlight with some white on here. all of that a little bit here here we'll tap it in here here eyelid eyelid so face is pretty easy doesn't require a lot of colors okay we're gonna do the beak and the feet so I've got a cinnamon stick. Let's see if this is going to be dark enough. I'm going to make this. Uh, I'm just going to line it because this is too fine of an area to try and um, shade and highlight on. We're definitely going to put some here. That's kind of our sh shading area on our beak. Let's go down to our feet. Didn't need to wash my. We're gonna go along this side. Okay, just uh, kind of outlining it. We'll go next to the blue part, and then we're going down and around. This way, and we've got to separate our little claws here. Okay, that was with cinnamon stick. Now, let's see if we can highlight with some um, pumpkin spice. It will be light enough to show up. I might have to add some white to it, maybe. I want this to come all the way down. Let me try a little moon yellow in there. Let's do moon yellow. Let's do two moon yellow and one pumpkin spice. There. We're going to put some here. Okay, uh, we're just going to do a little line. Try to do a little line. brighter up here. And what's our base color? Oh, that's too bright. Um, it was just persimmon. some persimmon back in here. We don't want to lose that color, that persimmon color. So oops. 
So if you feel like you're losing it, grab it back. And then I think we'll do a little tiny bit of white. And we'll do a little bit across here. Right through here. And on the very edge of the feet. Just some little little brightness on there. And again, if you feel like you've lost too much of any color, you just go back, go back a step or two. Okay, inside the mouth, we've got that um, we have burnt umber. I'm going to add a little bit of that orange to it. I really want this to be a little bit darker. Inside the mouth. And I think that's good. And let's work on the bow tie. Now the bow tie you can either line like we did the beak and the feet, or you can try shading it. I'm going to try shading it, but um, if that is a struggle because it's so small, then certainly try something else. Now, I've only used two brushes this whole painting. A two round and a eight chisel. So I'm going to be using Poetic Plum. And we're going to put some of this over here on this edge. And over here on this edge. Next to our knot. Just a small amount of paint here. our little openings down here. Okay, we'll put a little bit on our knot. Okay, so that's super easy, right? Let's take our little round brush or you can be using a detail liner. This round brush has an extremely fine tip on it. So I really like it and we're going to add some little wrinkles in our bow tie here. Very thin. Okay, I'm going to put a little line of this right here because I want that to be a little bit darker. Okay, now we're going to highlight, and we're going to use white in our base color. Two whites and one um, frosted plum. And we're going to add a little highlight here, a little highlight here, and on the top of the knot. Okay, and that was with our frosted plum and white. Two white, one frosted plum. Okay? If you want to add, now this is, is not a necessary step here. If you want to highlight next to those little wrinkles, you can, but not a necessary step. Okay? I think we'll brighten that. Well, let me put a little bit of this down here. Just a little bit. And then we're going to brighten a couple areas with some white. Okay, so we'll just take some white and a little bit up here. Too much moisture in my brush. Let me get that out. We pretty much want straight paint when we're doing these small little areas. A little white there, a little there, a little there, a little here, a little here. Okay. Just touch that back with my finger. Okay, 
just a simple little little bow tie. I mean, you can do so much more to that. You can obviously make it look like a satin tie by putting your float coming down, um, straight down each side of it. But um, I don't know that I want to do that. So on this tiny little little piece here. Okay, that finishes out the bow. Now we're going to outline the eyes here in a little bit. Um, but I want to go up and work on the branch and get it done. Okay, on the tree limb we're going to take our burnt umber. Get some fresh out here. Go along the bottom here with this dark color. Ooh, that's a lot of paint. I'm not going to add a lot of detail to this lamb, so. So that's our shading, and we're going to take our round brush, or our detail liner, whatever we've got, and we're just going to put some little streaky lines through here. Like I said, I don't really want a ton of detail, so you could make this a little knot, and this one a little knot. Just some minor details. Um, I'm going to go into a sable brown, maybe, and just grab a little bit of that on my brush, and we'll just make, maybe I won't because that paint's really thick. I'll really thin that down, maybe add a little white to it. You have to be careful adding white to brown because it really makes it chalky looking. And we'll just add few little highlights on here. Nothing that's going to be extremely noticeable by any means on that leaf, on that branch. Uh, we might come back and brighten a little bit, but uh, I think overall I want to keep it kind of just like that. Okay, on the leaves we're going to shade at the base of them with some mistletoe. leaves. Now we're going to add some veins. Like that, just a center vein. And they're not so big. That's ginormous. We don't need anything that big. And I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it connect them to the branch. And that's pretty much all we're going to do to the leaves there. Well, I think I might add just a little highlight on the tips. Just a little line of a highlight. That's moon yellow and white mixed together. Maybe a little bit more white 
in that mix. Okay, that's plenty good enough there. And we've got them connected. This one over here needs to be a little bit better connected. Grab a little bit of mark number. Alrighty. Okay, let's do our little jewels here that are at the top of this. And we're also going to do our music notes at the same time. Okay, we're going to paint in our beats here and our notes, just the round part of the notes. So we're going to be using Poetic Plum on one of our beads. And then we can go over here and do our music notes. Okay. Our next one we're going to use crisp blue. Okay, and we'll put a crisp blue music note. going to use, um, I think we'll use t -t -t pumpkin spice up here. And we'll do this one in pumpkin spice. Okay, and then we're going to use mistletoe on the next one. want to repeat all this color twice and then we'll add we'll just go ahead and make the last one that poetic plum or you could use a yellow on that one so that way your color is carried out farther so why don't we do that let's just change that one to a yellow one Oops, wipe my green off there. I don't want to do that. Come back with my green. Touch that one up. Okay, let's make that one yellow. Um, I think I'll try antique gold. It's a little bit darker of a color. Oh, got that circle big. Okay, so we need a second coat on all of these, but we got to make sure they're completely dry first. Okay, on all of our little beads and our music notes, we're going to take some white and we're just going to add a little highlight on here. A little white highlight. Okay, that might fade back in there. You might want to do it again. Okay, we're going to finish out the wire, the music notes, and our circle here and our eyes with an identa pen. So let me make sure I got one that's got plenty of ink in it. Checking them to make sure I've got one that's got the strongest amount of color in it. And this one is the one. So we're going to add our line on our notes. Put a little flag on that one. Okay, we'll 
I'll just add those on there. We're going to do our wire. It's going to come up and over and down. Let's bring it down to our, and then we're going to kind of weave it there. And that's with the small end. I'm using the small end. We're going to go around the eye and add some, a little bit thicker line here and a few little fun eyelashes. Why not? An eyebrow. Okay, you could outline the whole entire bird if you want to. That would be really cute. I'm going to take the fat end and we're going to start at this berry and we're going to follow our line. even wider. Thicken it up a little bit. So. I actually think it would look much better if it was thicker, so I'm going to go along beside it again. I'm going to stop at my music note. Music note be in front of it. Actually, the tail is going to be. Could have made the tail a little bit longer to come out past that a little bit. I'm a little wobbly over here, so let me see if I can smooth this out a little bit. There we go. That looks much better. And that's with an identipen. I'm going to erase my graphite lines around my music notes. And then we can highlight on our uh, identipen with a uniball um, gel pen or with white paint. highlight. On our little swing thing, you could also use this to add your highlight on your music notes if they are not anywhere on here. If your white is not popping like you want it to pop, then come in and use your, your gel pen and get a little bit brighter highlight on some of these areas. Okay. Pretty easy, I think. Now down here, this is a lot of open space down here, and this is where I was unsure if I wanted to put anything down here or just leave it this cute little bird. But you could bring in your palette knife and um, put some color under here. With your palette knife, some toned purples. So if I put some mountains down here, I'm 
I'm going to mix my Frosted Plum. I've got a little bit of white in there and then our background color which is that Blue Haven. That's going to really tone that to blend a little bit more with the background. A little bit more than that in there. Okay, so this step is totally optional. If you're not sure you're going to like it, you can varnish your piece, then apply this. If you don't like it, take a baby wipe and wipe it off. So we'll just create some little mountain areas in here. Using our palette knife. We'll put some light ones in and then a few darker ones in the front. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of just straight Poetic Plum, and put some of that in here, down at the bottom, and just create some mountain ranges. Easy. 